Hey, are you a business owner, entrepreneur, or professional? If so, we want you to apply to be a featured guest on our show. My name is Adam Torres, and I host the Mission Matters series of podcasts. I've recorded over 3,000 episodes, and we are just getting started. How do you know if you'd be a good guest to be on the show? Well, only one way to find out, and that's to apply, but I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We want guests that have a story to tell, guests with a brand, a product, or a service that can benefit my audience of listeners. If this sounds like you, go to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. I'd love to talk to you and get to know more about your story. Again, head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. And if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today I have Mike Rogers on the line, and he's president and CEO over at 4WL Consulting. Mike, welcome to the show. Thanks, Adam. It's great to be here. All right, Mike. So um, I'm excited to have you on the show today. First off, we're, we will 100% be covering your podcast. Always love to have fellow podcasters on the show. So I want to talk about that. Um, we, oh, you also have a book. We will definitely get into that. And then overall, we're going to talk about supply chain logistics. I know um, you're working with different companies and different things and you have a very special offer um, for those that it makes sense for to, do, to get some benchmark analysis um, done on for them. Um, and I believe you're going to be offering that complimentary for a certain amount of people. So we'll definitely get into that too. But um, just to get us kicked off, I will start this the way we start all our shows with our signature questions. So Mike, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. So that's our mission here. Mike, what mission matters to you? I've been a small business owner. I've been in this business for 44 plus years. And what I've seen is that carriers and third party logistic providers out there really underserve the small business community. And when I say small business, I mean under 200 million in gross revenue. Mm -hmm. And so what I decided I needed to do and being a small business owner myself is you know, there's a way to compete with your larger competitors. And I wanted to make it my mission to help small, mid-sized companies compete against their larger competitors using logistics as a competitive advantage. Man, that's awesome. Love it. Love somebody that's working and advocating on the side of small businesses and small business owners. So awesome stuff there. Great to have you on the show. And so you mentioned uh, 44 years or 40 plus years uh, in this field. So, I mean, how'd you get started? Like what led you on this path? Well, it was actually a, a fraternity brother that got me involved in this. Uh, I was going to school to be an accountant and uh, he managed a trailer leasing company and got promoted, moved to Chicago, needed somebody to take his place. And I said, sure, I'll do this while I'm going to school and got involved in transportation and just loved it. And um, from there, moved to another company where I started out dispatching. And then seven years later, I was running their company. And wow. after that, I decided it was time to open up my first business. So I opened up a trucking company and uh, we did drayage, which is pulling containers out of the railroads and the harbor and did that for a few years, merged it with somebody else. And then uh, 1994, I opened up uh, my company now and I've been doing this and I just love the variety and you come in every day and there's there's just something different so um you know and never look back and probably very happy that I didn't become an accountant no offense to accountants. <laughs> so first off logistics and transportation like I'm I'm a wannabe nerd on this stuff I love it I just think that the um I just think that the industry when we think about like and I guess the obvious nowadays in our current day is like Amazon when you think about everything that's going on with like how do they get those packages to us on time how is all of this happening that I can go online and literally look at like millions of things and all of a sudden like they're delivered to you and I know that's a very very basic level of understanding but I bring 
that up just because it's probably the most digestible for most people that are going to watch this is that that's what they see. And that like this little magic package just comes to you all the time. Like, it's amazing to me. So the reason I bring this up is I know there's a lot of like, there's going to be some people watching this that are curious about the logistics industry, just in general, like as a career, as a profession, like what kind of advice would you give to some people that are watching this right now? Um, if they're interested or want it or can, or want to kind of explore like what's out there. Yeah, well, I, I would say definitely look into this business. Uh, like a lot of industries right now, there's a lot of talent shortage in supply chain and logistics. And mm -hmm. it's really, you know, it's the heartbeat of every business. Yeah. Um, you know, with, with logistics and what I do in the transportation side of logistics, you know, you could say it's as simple as getting your product from point A to point B, but there's mm -hmm. a lot of moving parts and it's like a puzzle. And so... Um, and there's a lot of companies out there that need expertise in that. So if you're looking to get involved in logistics, it's definitely a field that's up and coming. And if you think about it um, or you do some research, you'll yeah. see that people like Tim Cook and Apple and, mm -hmm. and GM and a lot of the major corporations, the, those CEOs were all in supply chain or had mm -hmm. something to do with supply chain. So if you want to move up the ladder, there you go. Yeah, that, that, that's big time. Great advice there. Um, so if you could go back, let's just say if you could go back in your in your logistics career or just in general, like kind of go back and give yourself some advice. Like, let's say you're getting you're just getting started again. Um, what kind of things would you tell yourself? Wow, <laughs> that's a big one. Wait, wait, I should say related to your career. <laughs> you, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Um, I probably wouldn't change anything that I've done. You yeah. know, when I started out in this business, luckily I wasn't married, so I, I didn't have a family. Uh, you know, I was 18 at the time, uh, but I just immersed myself in it. Mm -hmm. And I worked seven days a week. You know, sometimes it was 24 seven. There were times I was sleeping on the sofa in the dispatch office, <laughs> um, you know, and just really got immersed in everything. And um you know, just learned everything I could because it wasn't something I was able to go to school and learn. Um, so I, I probably wouldn't change a whole lot, but, um, you know, maybe a few certifications here and there, which I've actually done later on in my career. So mm -hmm. maybe I would have done those earlier and maybe it would have bumped up my salary a little bit more because yeah. they got a steal. I, when I started in this business, I, I made $600 a month. Wow. <laughs> so <laughs> but that was a while ago, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, Jimmy Carter was president, so that tells you something. There you go. So um, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. So, so Mike, um, now bringing us some um, present day in logistics, lot going on. I mean, what what's interesting to you that you're seeing in the industry? Well, this is something that nobody who's been involved, whether they've been involved five years, 10 years, or as long as I have, have seen because of what's going on. You know, it, it's and it is, yes, partly related to the pandemic or not mm -hmm. partly, but a lot related to the pandemic. But there's also things like, you know, climate, what's going on with mm -hmm. extreme weather uh, events yeah. going on out there. Um, there's also something we've been experiencing for probably the last eight, nine years, uh, mm -hmm. which is uh, talent uh, and yeah. the lack of talent. And also in trucking, the truck drivers are all aging out. I think the average age of yeah. truck drivers is a few years ago is like 57, 58. Wow. And people are just not getting back into that business. So it'll mm -hmm. be interesting to see in the future if, uh, you know, autonomous driving becomes, you know, more popular and, and yeah. a way to, to make up that difference. Uh, but, you know, that's creating shortages out there. There's shortages in supply chain in China with lockdowns. Mm -hmm which is kind of a domino effect, you know, yeah. it creates imbalances here. And, you know, with everybody being locked down, more people are spending money on products rather than services. Mm -hmm. So, you know, until we get back to that balance, which could be a year or two, you know, down the road. Uh, so there's just a lot of uncertainty mm -hmm. out there in the, in the market and it's driving prices up. I mean, we've seen pricing that, you know, has gone up three, four hundred percent, which is mm. just crazy. And, you know, how that's going to affect our economy is, you know, we're, we're watching that. 
So why should, I mean, a lot of executives that watch this. And uh, so why should C-level execs be like concerned with some of the things that you're talking about? Because some of the things that we don't know, like you said, you're watching it, but like, what are some of the potential outcomes that could happen because of this? Because they're like for the, the savvy, you know, C-level exec that it, like they're out there and they're, they're making plans, but you know, why should people be concerned? Well, I think, you know, in the past, especially with C-level, you mm-hmm. know, they, they have their, their team maybe down in the warehouse or, you yeah. know, one guy in charge of shipping that, you know, was able to handle what was going on. But, you know, now with the way prices are going up, I mean, their budgets are skyrocketing. And so they really need to take a better look at what's going on, be more involved Mm -hmm. in the strategies that are being uh, implemented. Um, You know, and if you look at major corporations too, you know, Mm -hmm. we've seen that uh, they now have chief supply chain officer. So that, that level is being elevated to the C-suite. So yeah. uh, small and, and mid-sized companies should be doing the same thing, looking at that. Now, it mm-hmm. doesn't mean they're going to go out and hire another executive to run that sure. at, as, as the owner of the business or the, the leader of the business. Uh, you need to be setting vision for the company and being more involved in what's going on because it does have such a dramatic effect on the overall business. And, mm-hmm. and your customers. I want to stick, let's stick on that theme a little bit longer. So you mentioned, um, you know, small to medium size. So maybe give us a little bit of a, a breakdown or just kind of like what you see in terms of vantage point from maybe that fortune 1000 to that medium size to that small business and kind of how all these different players, so to speak, should be thinking about supply chain and logistics. Well, I, you know, they, they all have to have their own strategies. Every company has different things going on. But I think right now what you're even seeing is yeah. a, a, a leveling because you have giants, Walmarts, Home Depots, Lowe's, everybody. They're having the same issues that, you know, a mom and pop that brings in five containers a year is having. There's just mm-hmm. no capacity if they're bringing containers in from China or whatever. So, uh you know, I think there's kind of a leveling of the playing field. So everybody needs to to kind of be involved at that C-suite to, to um, you know, figure out what's going on and, and collaborate mm-hmm. with their providers. And, you know, before you, you there was a move to not have as many providers because yeah. one or two could, you know, really fulfill all your needs. I think now it's back to, hey, you need resources because one day your longstanding provider has something they can help you with and the next day they don't and somebody else might have that. So so it's, it's you know, having relationships and, and working together with those providers, you know, and, and a large companies, they have a team, they'll have a logistics team, sure. multiple people, mm-hmm. um, you know, a smaller company is not going to have that. So having, you know, good partners you know, that are doing that day in and day out, know exactly mm-hmm. what's going on in the industry, mm-hmm. you know, is going to be able to help you out tremendously as a small business. Mm. What do you think some of the biggest mistakes are that people are making right now in, um, in logistics? It could be the bigger, it could be the bigger company, it could be the smaller company, but what do you think are some of those common mistakes that they're making? And maybe don't know, obviously, that they're making. Yeah, well, you know, what, what we see is that, you know, large companies, they'll go out and they'll, benchmark their rates and see what's going on and see how they compare. So that way, mm-hmm. when they go negotiate, they have a better idea of whether they're really getting a good rate or not. Yeah. And what we've seen smaller companies do is they'll they'll go out and they maybe get rates from a few companies, but mm-hmm. they don't really know where they stand in the marketplace because they're not mm-hmm. going to spend that kind of money to get a benchmark uh, analysis done. And you know, there's different ways of going out and getting rates. And sometimes mm-hmm. they'll just call three carriers, take the cheapest and go from there. And and what that might do to you is, you know, you have a cheap carrier and <laughs> they don't deliver or they deliver yeah. damage. And what does that do to your, you know, your interface with your customers? Yeah. So, um, so those are some of the mistakes that, that, that I see companies doing out there. So speaking of benchmarking, I think that's a great transition. So um, let's let's dive into 4WL Consulting and what you're doing there. So first off, um, tell us a little bit more about why you started the company. So I originally started as a as a 3PL provider, and I was providing mm-hmm. all the services myself. Um, you know, whether it was LTL or truckload, intermodal, mm-hmm. and 
I've, I've kind of morphed into 4WL Consulting to really go out there and work with these companies. And I created what I call the Transaver Spend Analysis, which is a benchmark mm-hmm. analysis for the small to mid-sized companies, primarily with LTL and Parcel, so that they could actually see where they are uh, in the marketplace, give the C-level executive mm-hmm. a high-level view of where they stand so that they could actually you know, really implement a better strategy if they need to. And there are times where they might see that what they're doing is really working well. And, and that's always good to know, to have that confidence that what we're doing is, is proper. But if not, you know, maybe there's a few things you could tweak and optimize. And so mm-hmm. that's why I created 4WL Consulting to help companies get a bigger picture mm-hmm. of what they're doing so they can go out and on the micro level perform better. What type of companies do you find uh, get the most value out of working with you and your team? So it could be size of company, it could be industry, revenue, like what, what, who normally gets the most value out of working with you and your team? So what I found is, is companies somewhere in the neighborhood between 10 and $200 million. Mm-hmm. Uh, those, those are the companies that don't necessarily have a large team, uh, don't have the buying power, mm-hmm. um, they don't have the technology and they, they really need a partner to help them look yeah. at their overall strategy. So, and they could just be manufacturers, distributors, anybody that's, you know, you're paying for freight, whether it's shipping it out to your customers or mm-hmm. the raw materials coming in. A lot of people overlook the materials coming in. They think, oh, I'll let the vendor, you know, ship it to me and add mm-hmm. the freight on. And they could be saving a lot of money because they don't know what he's paying. Ah, so what now benchmarking, benchmark analysis, I mean, one, one of the specialties, as you mentioned, um, what goes into that? Like what, what can somebody expect in general? So, you know, it's, it's a snapshot of what you're doing. Uh, what we like to do is we have a conversation, it's a simple three-step process. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we have a conversation, learn a little bit more about the business and it doesn't take a long time, 30, 45 minutes to, mm-hmm. to find out what's going on. We know the right questions to ask. You know, then it's data collection and and Mm -hmm. collecting some data, 30, 60 days worth of data. And then we take that data, we analyze it, and then we come back and we give a a presentation of what we find and, uh, you know, where there's areas that can be optimized, other Mm -hmm. suggestions we have with the way they're doing business, maybe their their procedures. Uh, And then after that meeting, you have a great idea of where you stand in the marketplace. So I, I know it's pretty obvious, right? So if you if this analysis comes back and it's um, in my mind, I should say, correct me if I'm wrong. If this analysis comes back and it's like, wow, you you stand really good in the marketplace, then that's a no brainer. Okay, what you're doing is working. But on the other side of things, if the analysis comes back and there's some room for improvement, um, it should be pretty obvious. Am I off on this, or is that like, am I right? You tell me. Well, yeah. I mean, obviously, they're going to look at this and say, hey, we need to, to implement some of these strategies yeah. that you came back with. And, and then I'm there to help if they want mm-hmm. my help or if they want to do it internally. Uh, you know, they're more than welcome to try that. But most of the time, people, uh, mm-hmm. you know, w- will work with me. As a matter of fact, I had a uh, office retail uh, or office uh, furniture manufacturer and and they were spending about 1.2 million dollars mm-hmm. on freight transportation. We did the analysis, showed them about a 14.67 uh, percentage, which you know equated to about 184 thousand dollars in sales. That's big. It, it was, and you know, one of the other benefits was it just really uh, improved their delivery times too, uh. because we were able to show them with carriers, you know, what kind of standard deliveries they should be getting and better carriers, which resulted in less claims for them. So uh, that was a big, big plus for them and their customers. Now, that's not that's not an isolated incident. I mean, this is what you do. So for people watching this, this isn't like, like Mike just found this one thing. That's just one example. But um, I mean, this is what you're doing day in and day out. Like you're creating these strategies and then you're also helping with the implementation side when they want it, right? Um, tell us a little bit more about how that part of it works. So let's just say I'm, I'm a client. I came in and, I, and I'm and i like, you did this analysis. You're working with me. You said the phone call is not that long initially, 45 minutes or so. You go back, your team does the work, does the analysis. You come back with the proposal showing where there could be some some opportunity areas. 
Um, and if there are opportunity areas, then like, what does that part of it look like? Like the actual execution? Because sometimes I feel like people watch things or like, there's some people watching this right now that are thinking, I've never, oh, you know what? Have we even ever had an analysis? I didn't even know that was possible. I know there's some people watching that right now. <laughs> and they're like, we could probably, we could probably really benefit from this, but I don't want to do another thing. It's just another thing. I don't have time. I'll, let's look at this in, you know, Q3 or Q4 or Q1. You know, we always put things off like this that we know can benefit us pretty quickly. So what does the implementation side of things look like? Well, before I get to the implementation, that's that's exactly why I created the Transaver Spend Analysis, because mm -hmm. it, it pretty much takes maybe about an hour and a half of time. Wow. And not all at once. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, for somebody. So uh, so for a client to 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 do the, the benchmark. And so that way it's not very time consuming. So hopefully that's a no brainer. Yeah. Uh, but then if they decide they want to work with us, you know, then what we do is then we go out, we start doing negotiations with the carriers and, you know, getting the rates mm -hmm. that the, the analysis showed or as close to them. And we come back and we say, OK, here are the rates. Now, here's your actual savings. We can we can actually do this in black and white because, you know, a benchmark gives you a snapshot of where you should be in the marketplace. Yeah. But it also depends on, you know, what you're able to go out and negotiate. For sure. Um, and and I work with partners that, you know, have good buying power so that they're able to usually get pretty close to where we are and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with the analysis. And then at that time, they can decide, OK, this sounds good. Let's let's move forward. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we work with the uh, the carriers to publish the pricing and everything. Uh, I, I don't work on contracts. So, you know, I believe that you should be providing value every day, day in, day out. Mm -hmm. And if if the client doesn't feel like they're getting the value, they, they shouldn't have to go to an attorney to get out of it. Yeah. So, you know, it should just, hey, let's part and be friends. But that really hasn't ever happened. So, uh, but it's it's very simple and it usually takes a couple of months to, you know, implement everything because after we get the pricing in place with the carriers, then mm -hmm. it's technology and giving them technology to manage that, manage KPIs and manage, yep. uh, you know, get visibility into their shipments. And so there's a whole lot more that goes on to it that makes them more efficient, makes their team more efficient. But this is great because what they're doing then is that they benefit from your, you know, and not to, by the way, not to pick on this um, furniture company because it may not be the case for them, but just in general, when a company, you know, as it grows, let's just say it was the furniture company. So maybe they had one location, maybe they at some point expanded to two, but maybe it started as a small business, like a, a typical small business, and they increase their square footage over time and they've done the best they could. And they're obviously making money or else they wouldn't have grown to those amount of sales, right? But they've never, like very few businesses in many different um, sectors, whether it's technology, whether it's logistics, whether it's sometimes even their finance or accounting, like you start and you grow organically and you keep on growing. But at a certain point, like it makes sense to bring in an outside professional to show you how to optimize things and to show you where you're losing money. Because if you would have started the business originally, like let's say you weren't bootstrapping or you had a different level of funding in the beginning to grow to where you're at, you possibly would have did that at the beginning anyway, like, cause you would have had to figure it out. Right. But now what, what you're doing is you're kind of like, you're at that point in growth in sales. And now you're, you're watching this and you're like, well, have we ever done that? Have we ever brought in a logistics expert to to see if what we're doing is, you know, done the best way it could be. We've been doing the best we could, but we don't have anybody in our team that's been in logistics for 40 years plus. Like we don't have that. And then you shouldn't, by the way, unless you're a huge company. Um, right. But if we're talking that midsize or even small business, then this type of stuff to me is just a no brainer because it's like, all right, we're going to learn. We're going to make some money off this. We're going to get better. And then Correct me if I'm wrong on this one too, Mike. Um, so then let's say you get done with this process. It's not like it's ongoing. It's living and breathing. Like logistics is moving. Logistics in, is changing. So it's an ongoing potential for relationship because those rates are going to change in the future too. And they're going to adjust and there's going to be different things in the market. And then you're going to need to um, adjust like with them and with what the market's doing. Am I off on that? No, that's exactly what we do. When somebody uh, 
decides they want to use us to implement the strategies, we have uh, quarterly reviews with them so that we're constantly looking at things and, and mm. finding, oh, well, we need to make a tweak here or a tweak there because it's not a set it and forget it type of system, which is what a lot of people do. They get rates from a carrier. They mm -hmm. think, okay, we got great rates, you know, and they just use them for five years and don't realize that things are going up or, you know, what's going on. So, um, so there's that. And, and I also find that, you know, usually logistics are, we're the last people when you're doing a launch of a new product or, you know, you get a new customer that has different, uh, procedures or things like that. And they always go to logistics last after they got all the business rather mm -hmm. than, Hey, we're thinking about doing business with this company. Here's what they're telling us. How's that going to affect us? Yeah. And let's be in, in the beginning of the conversation and not the end of the conversation. So. And so, you know, you know, I have to ask the money question here. So what does a benchmark analysis um, typically cost for a business? So you, you could run into thousands or tens of thousands of dollars for a large company. Mm. And, you know, I knew that wasn't going to be feasible for small and medium sized businesses. So, you know, we're not doing a, a three year long benchmark analysis where we're going back in time that far or anything mm -hmm. like that. What we do is we we take 30 to 60 days worth of data and we're able to do that. And we can actually do it at no cost for the cu customer just to show the value of what we can bring to the table. You know, if it makes sense, you know, sometimes it won't make sense and that's fine. Uh, but that's why it doesn't take a lot of time on their part. Mm -hmm. It takes a little bit of time on our part, but not a lot of time. And that's why I can offer it at, you know, no cost. Man, that's big time. So now they get the, your expertise. They get to get you to work with them. And even just to do that benchmark analysis, like they have that screenshot or that picture of where they're at and they don't even have to come out of pocket. Like, come on, Mike, you're, you're making it too easy for them. Well, well, I do have one that I charge for, which is a little bit more in depth, but mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't always make sense. And, you know, and if somebody decides, Hey, we really want that, that's fine. But, uh, you know, I, I think there's a way to build value for this and a relationship. And, you know, I would say 70% of the time that uh, we do an analysis for a company that we wind up with a long-term relationship. Man, that's awesome. And those are great numbers. And you wouldn't have those numbers if you weren't doing quality work. So the numbers speak for themselves on that one. So that's awesome. Um, I want to switch it up a bit, Mike. I want to get into some of the other things. And by the way, at the end of this, for everybody watching, I'm going to give Mike an opportunity to, uh, to leave websites, all that kind of stuff. So if you're watching this and you do want to uh, get um, that benchmark analysis to make see if it makes sense for you, it'll also be in the show notes, all that good stuff. Um, but Mike, I want to talk about some of the content that you're creating, because something that I find really interesting about your brand and what you're doing overall at 4WL um, Consulting is that you are a content creator too. So first off, um, tell me about this podcast. So I, I, I created the Manufacturing Success Podcast as a way to you know, talk with C-level executives that are out there being successful and give them not only a platform to talk about what they're doing, but also explore trends and, and things that are working in the industry to share with other, mm -hmm. you know, executives in manufacturing. So uh, that's what I did with the Manufacturing Success Podcast. All right, Mike. So in terms of the podcast, so like what's one of your favorite things about being a podcaster and about getting that, that message out there? Well, the, the great thing is just meeting new people and mm -hmm. getting ideas and, and finding out what, you know, what people are doing out there. You know, it's, it's just fun. It's, it's educational and, you know, it's social and it's uh, just love exploring that with, with other leaders and business leaders and, and learning because I, I learn a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, I've always been on the logistics side, so I get to hear the, the other side of the, the table, so to speak. What kind of content can people expect when they go to listen to it? Like in general, like format. So is it like, are they shorter, like 15, 20 minutes? Is it an hour plus? Like give us a feel for just the content. Cause I want all of my listeners to definitely go and check it out. Thank you. Well, and, and we are on Apple and Spotify and all the other major platforms, but uh, yeah, they, you know, it's, it's a 20, 25 minute uh, interview it kind of similar to this where I'm just mm -hmm. talking with with the guest. Uh, it's audio and um, 
you know, just asking questions and, and letting them kind of tell their story. It's awesome. All right. Now, um, you also speaking of content, so multimedia here. So of course you have the podcast, as we mentioned, um, also a book. So return on logistics. Um, how'd the book come about? So the book came about, uh, because I was really trying to, you know, spread the word Mm -hmm. about why having a logistics partner is important. And especially for for small mid-sized companies, mm-hmm. um, you know, so it really kind of just recaps all the the information that somebody would want on why they would want to partner with a 3PL, the benefits of partnering with a 3PL, the drawbacks, and and just give them more information, you know, without having to to talk to people. Uh, so I wanted to be able to have a book that I could send to people. It is available on Amazon, mm-hmm. but yeah, let's face it. Nobody's going to really buy a book on logistics on Amazon. Uh, so I don't know if somebody, somebody, well, we're going to, well, we're going to put the show, we're going to put in the show notes a nice uh, a hyperlink and we'll see. Cause uh, if you're somebody watching this right now and you're, and you want to benefit from that knowledge, Hey, I'm all about it. And we, I like supporting authors anyway. So anybody watching this that's written a book or wants to write one, you better support that book. Go ahead, Mike. Sorry. <laughs> I had to, we like selling books on this show too. <laughs> Well, I will always sell a book, but I do offer it on my website too. So return on logistics.com. So, uh, so somebody can get it there too. We have a PDF version as well as the uh, a hard copy. And I, and I always, uh, you know, like to, to get people a hard copy just so they have it to, to review. What is one, and I know you mentioned a couple and I know there's more, but, and I know when anybody puts out a book, it's because they have, you know, quite a bit of content that they want a reader to get. But if there was like just one takeaway, if you had to narrow it to one, like what would be the main takeaway you'd want a reader to get out of that book? I think that what they should get out of that book is that, you know, when you don't have the expertise in-house, that there are capable uh, companies out there, and it could be any industry, but obviously I'm focusing on logistics, you know, that can be a partner and it keeps your costs down, but gets your experience and your expertise, you know, a lot higher than it could be. And, mm-hmm. you know, working together, it lets you you focus on your core competency, which is manufacturing and selling your product and, and not, you know, having to move product. That's awesome. It's great stuff. And so, and overall, Mike, when I look at what you're doing, so when I look at obviously the work you're doing for, for, for your clients over at 4WL, um, you look, and then I look at the content you're creating, like you're, you're really covering a lot of the different sectors there that you need to do so that people trust you. They understand you. They, they know your business. They also know that you have expertise in your business. I mean, my hat goes off to you just on every, like hitting all those different areas. I find so many businesses that could benefit from doing things like what you're doing. Like you don't have to write a book. You don't have to, you don't have to produce podcast content or video content. You don't have to come on a show like this and tell your story and educate the public. Like there's people that will watch this content that may not do business with you, but that will go back and they're like, Hey, we need to start thinking about this. Even if they just have the meeting internally to start doing that, there's probably, I'm guessing people watching this that don't even do that. Call three, call three companies to get three different rates thing. They might've been with their same carrier for the last 15 years. And they're just assuming that they're getting the right, like the numbers are the way they're supposed to be. Right. So like the fact that you're doing all of these things is just a testament to you being a mission-based entrepreneur, business owner. I mean, you're, you're leading not just with your offer, but you're leading with content. You're leading with knowledge. You're even giving away a book. We don't, I don't like giving away books, but you're giving away things too. <laughs> I like selling them, but it's okay. But um, you're giving away things too. Um, fantastic. I, I, it is. Uh, so with all that being said, a lot going on over there. I mean, so what's next? So what's next for Mike? What's next for the company? What's next for the content? Well, you know, first of all, just, you know, to address giving it away, I, you know, I believe if you share what, what you put out there, we'll come back mm-hmm. to you. So, you know, I, I'm not worried about, you know, a sale of a book or anything, yeah. because I think it'll come back tenfold. Um, you know, what's next? Continuing with the, the podcast, always looking for good podcast guests. So if any of the manufacturing leaders are, you know, out here, please, you know, get in touch with me. Um, 
and and just working with companies and uh, trying to navigate right now, navigate through these difficult mm-hmm. times that we're in and trying to, you know, figure out how to, you know, ease the burden somewhat. Well, Mike, so this has been great. I mean, obviously, you're doing a lot of mission-based work here with all the all the work that you're doing for your companies, for your and just even just putting out content like this, like going out of your way to share and to educate with the public. Um, if somebody's watching this and they want more information on um, getting that benchmark analysis that we talked about earlier, or a, or, the, or getting a copy of the book, or even listen to the podcast, I mean, how do people connect with you and the brand overall? Great. Well, uh, if they want more information, how the Transaver spend analysis works, go to save with TSA, Transaver spend analysis.com. So save with TSA.com. Uh, if they're interested in the book, return on logistics.com. And of course, my website, 4WLConsulting.com. And uh, manufacturing success, just look for it on iTunes, Spotify, um, Amazon, and subscribe. Man, that's awesome. Um, So Mike, uh, thanks again for coming on the show today. And to the audience and everybody listening, um, definitely go check that, go check out those sites. Um, We'll definitely have the the links in the show notes. So you can easily just go scroll through and click on them and um, and go get what you want out of that. And uh, Mike, really been a pleasure. And to the audience, as always, don't forget, hit that subscribe button. Definitely want you to be a return listener and visitor. And uh, Mike, thanks again for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure. Adam, thank you very much. Enjoyed it.